Nobody enjoys participating in the Passion Play, and that's what we've just done. We've done the Passion Play. The practice began in the Middle Ages. Uh, it was done in Latin, and uh, the congregation would be everybody outside uh, going to different places in the village and saying these words or one of the Gospels renditions of the Passion Play, uh, taking these roles and becoming part of the action. And I think it, it's a wonderful tradition because it forces us into saying the words that we don't want to say. And it also gives us a new chance to uh, be, be participants in this in a different way that some of you who are not readers get to have a part. And all of us have to say, crucify him, crucify him. And it's, I hate it every year. And this is the second time I've done it this morning, and it's been harder for me this time than it was at the 7.30 service. But that's good. We want our, our faith to be new. We want the Bible to um, knock us sideways sometimes, and it's knocking me sideways today. This is uh, Mark's rendition of the story, and there's a few things I need to point out about how Mark is different from the other gospel writers. It looks at first reading like you know this, you know what happens at the end, and you know all the betrayal, right? But the things that Mark emphasizes make it a little bit different this morning, so I'll uh, exaggerate those for you. The, the first thing comes with the reading we did in the parish hall when we were blessing the palms. That was part of the gospel. We actually had two gospels today, this long passion play and this reading from Mark. And in this reading from Mark, Jesus tells one of his disciples to go down and untie a colt and bring it to him. And they say, well, Lord, what are we going to say to them when we want to steal their colt? And he says, say this, say that the Lord has need of it. And in saying that, Jesus is saying that he is the Lord. He says, tell them that the Lord has need of it and will send it back immediately when he's finished. So he's either referring to God working through him or he's calling himself Lord. And that does make sense because in the procession with the palms, people are throwing palms in his path and they're waving the palms and they're saying, here comes the Son of God. Here is the King of Kings. Here is the Lord of Lords. And they're quoting from the Psalms, but many people, especially his disciples, believe that that's who he was. So this is one of the important things that Mark brings out, is all the different names for Jesus, they are embedded in this story, but it's unlikely people who say them. The next time we hear is when Jesus is with his disciples and he's praying, and he's pleading with them to stay awake. And this is one of my, uh, I have a difficult time staying awake when I want to say my prayers late at night, or if I sign up for the midnight watch, I have a horrible time staying awake. I'll get there and I'll promptly fall asleep. <laughs> so I understand what happened with the disciples. But Mark makes it extremely painful to watch how desperately he is praying, knowing that this is the hour. And in Mark, every second of the crucifixion happens at a certain hour. So the denial and betrayal of Jesus happens in the darkness at night. And Jesus is throwing himself on the ground. He is desperate with the desire to have this taken from him. And his disciples seem to be detached. They're physically detached. They're off to one side. And they also keep falling asleep. And Jesus, for Mark, is asking for them to help fight the devil. Help and keep this hour from coming. If you pray, in other words, this may not happen and they don't pray. And because it's three times, and this happens in all the Gospels, we know that they were asked three times and they still kept falling asleep. So that when the hour comes for Judas the betrayer and these armed guards who come with him, the dawn is coming, we're right on the cusp of the night and the day, and he wakes up his disciples and they're groggy with sleep and he says, forget it, you missed it. Get up, the hour is at hand, I have been betrayed. And in walks Judas. If they had been praying, they would have been prepared for this moment. No telling what they would have done. But because they were sound asleep, 
when Jesus wakes them up and then here comes Judas and gives them the kiss and he's betrayed, they act out because they're caught off guard. They were not prepared. They did not pray all night. And what did they do? They take out their sword. They cut off an ear. They act ridiculous. They didn't act the way Jesus wanted them to act so that he had to stop them and teach them again that you have to just give in to the will of God. But that's an important point that Mark makes. Also, Jesus is talking to his father, and did you see what he calls his father? Abba, which is daddy. So this is a very intimate moment for Jesus. He's talking to his father and asking that this hour pass him by. And obviously, he's teaching us how to pray. That we are told earlier in the gospel that ask for anything you want and it shall be yours. I always remember that. But then look what Jesus does. He asked for this hour to pass, that he not have to drink this cup. But then he adds what we're supposed to add. But not my will, but yours. And that's the catch. Then we have the next scene. And this is what introduces a very interesting thing. That while Jesus is pleading with his disciples, and then goes to have a trial in front of the religious authorities and the Roman authorities, Peter is going through his own, he didn't pray with Jesus, but he is going to be uh, interrogated by somebody very unexpected. What happens when Jesus tells them to accept what's happening and he is let off? It says right here they all scatter, all of them. So Peter, James, and John are part of the group that scatters. And then when Peter is lurking around the edges, <laughs> He, he left, but then he comes back to lurk. He doesn't want to be right there with Jesus because he'll get crucified too, most likely. But he lurks. And where does he lurk? Somewhere where he can stay warm. And who comes to interrogate him? He's not expecting this. Remember, he slept all night. He's not prepared. He did not say his prayers. He's lurking. He wouldn't be doing that if he'd said his prayers all night. Who was the young girl in our play? Was that you? <laughs> you Debbie was the, was the young girl. So you are the foe that <clears throat> Peter has to stand up to you and, and say, yes, I, I love my Lord Jesus. I am the man you think I am. But he's not prepared for a little servant girl. And he thinks you're nothing. So he doesn't answer the truth. And he's not on guard. He just wants to stay safe which is what we all want to do. And if we're caught off guard, we'll do the same thing without saying our prayers. So his test came from the most unlikely of places. You wonder why he didn't speak up? Well, who's this little girl? She's a nobody. Sorry. <laughs> then we have the conversation going between the religious authorities in the, uh, in the temple and with Jesus. And here's what we want to hear out of this little bit. When the high priest says, are you the Messiah, the son of the blessed one? What do we say as readers? Yes, right? Yes, he's the Messiah, the son of the blessed one. Why didn't the high priest say the name of God? Why did he call God the blessed one? You're never to say the name of God, remember? He's Yahweh, I am who I am. But look who says the name of God. Jesus says, I am, meaning Yahweh. He says his name, that he is God. And then he says, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power. He could call him Abba or Father, but he doesn't use the name for Yahweh in this place either. He's imitating the high priest. Who is the God of power? That's none other than his daddy, Abba. And he says the name. Then we go to the cross. No, first we go to the king, to the Roman authorities. Pardon me, I'm skipping ahead. And Pilate asks him directly, are you the king of the Jews? And as faithful believers, we answer, yes. Yes, he is the king of the Jews. But he is silent. And that points back to that other conversation he had with the high priests. He was silent with them. He said one thing to them. And he's silent with his accusers in the um, government's office with 
it, it, Caiaphas was the high priest and uh, Pontius Pilate, even though the names aren't there, we know who they are from the other writers, right? Pontius Pilate is asking him all these questions and Jesus is silent until he says, you say so, when Pilate says, are you the king of the Jews? You say so. And then he makes no further reply. And that fulfills scripture, that he's like a lamb going to the slaughter who does not open his mouth. He doesn't open his mouth. And then, as he's hanging on the cross, the congregation all says, Hail, King of the Jews. So this is Mark using his irony, that we hear all these titles for Jesus, but they're said in all the wrong ways. And it's very painful to hear them said the way they're said. And it's just like fingernails on a blackboard, and it makes you feel like everything is wrong with the world, and I hate that this is Holy Week, and we don't want to go through this again. And that's exactly how you're supposed to feel. We're supposed to hate it. But we're supposed to know that through this crisis, Peter becomes the rock of the church. He becomes the leader of the church. And we give thanksgiving for our brave evangelists who wrote the true story down of what Peter actually did. That he ran, that he didn't stay up and pray, that he denied himself to a little girl. He let his Lord down in many, many ways. And he was thick as a post. So we don't have to feel bad, right? <laughs> because we can't, we can't live up to the call that we have to be true to Jesus all the time. We can't, and we have examples like our fumbling disciples to lead the way. And we know that it's not our job to be perfect because only God is perfect. So we do our attempt to worship him this holy week and to play the part that we are told to play, to try and stay up and say our prayers, and then to let it go and let God do what God does best, which is to resurrect him within us and therefore make us holy people. And he does it again and again and again. Amen. <clears throat>